Alrighty, it's time to get the 8 o'clock hour going. Brought to you by Cornelius Custom Services here in the Lake Country area. And as the taxi always pulls up, door opens up, Joe, the Brown Insurance guy, gets out. And we got stuff to talk about this morning, folks. So, good morning to you, Rick. Good morning, sir. How's it going? We are well. We are well. Well, it's uh, not a bad game last night. Kind of up a little late, but not too bad. Yeah, it's, no, not bad at all. Weather was great, and uh, it's good to get back to the house, though. But uh, we got to take our sports hats off and put on the insurance yes. stuff going on here. I guess this morning what we need to talk about is uh, your home and what you don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things on your homeowner's insurance policy that you may think, hey, that's included, uh, but it really may not be. A um, couple of the couple of the highlights that we'll talk about today. One of them is uh, on your standard homeowner's policy. Pretty much all of them out there. None of them are going to include earthquake. Um, so not a huge deal around here. Well, it's it's becoming kind of a deal around here. Yeah, I mean, not not Graham direct, but we certainly get them uh, up in Oklahoma. Uh, we get those alerts from time to time and then over in the Azel area and stuff like that. And, of course, we're not here to debate the cause of them by any means. We're just simply here to say if you... If you have a home um, and an earthquake shakes your house's foundation, gets a crack or something like that, that's not a covered thing on a homeowner's policy. It's an endorsement. You have to get an endorsement added to it. Some folks may say, well, how much does that cost? Uh, Typically on most of those policies, you know, you have like a 1% or 2% deductible for wind and hail and things like that. Most of the time, um, we've seen policies where you get like a 5% deductible just because it doesn't happen that often. We're in Texas. We're not in California or some other state right. where earthquakes are pretty prevalent. So if that's something you want to, uh, you know, you're thinking about, hey, maybe I need to add that, talk to your agent. The other one is uh, flood insurance. You know, uh, a lot of folks sometimes maybe buy a house if you're new to the area or you've lived in an area for so long. And, hey, we, we some, may fo- some folks may say, hey, I hope flood's an issue because that means we got a ton of rain. Well, we would love a ton of rain. Um, if you get too much rain and it causes a flood, that's not a common um, – that's not a thing on your homeowner's insurance policy that's automatically included on there. Again, an endorsement, actually a separate flood policy that you would have to get. And there's been some changes to the flood policies that uh, the government um, has gone back and forth on and just how those policies are rated, premiums for those policies. So um, if you've got a flood policy, check with your agent, see if there's been any changes to yours. If you don't have a flood policy and you think, you know what, I'm living pretty close to a river or a creek or a lake, something like that, you may want to touch base with your agent and say, hey, let me maybe get a study looked at. Uh, Do we need to talk about flood insurance? Is it a big deal? Most of the time when you buy a house, if you're mortgaging a house to a bank, they're going to have a study done, and they're going to tell you that you need it or you don't need it. Now, there's been some discrepancies as well on, hey, they're telling me I need it, but I live on the top of a hill. So, again, check with the professionals. Get your agent involved in the conversation. Make sure that – see if you're going to need a flood insurance policy or not. The other one that's pretty common around here, we see it happen quite a bit – um, let's face it, the, the city sewer uh, pipes are old. It's an, it's an older town. Some of the pipes are really, really old, and those pipes are going to break. The, if there's a backup of sewer uh, water into your home from work that's being done on the city side or anything else like that, none of that is covered on a normal policy. You need to get an endorsement on that. Most of the time, those endorsements will cover uh, – typically, we start them off at about $10,000 worth of coverage. Now, it is subject to your deductible. So in your head, think, well, if I've got a 1% deductible for that, uh, I want to make sure I have enough coverage to make it worth my while. If your deductible is, say, you know, 23 or 3300 bucks, depending on how large your house is, right. hey, 5000 bucks may not really be worth it. But 10000 15000 20000 you'd be surprised. Talk to some folks that have had – had this happen where they come home and it's like, yeah, I got about two inches of raw sewage sitting in my bathtub. Usually the bathtub and the toilet bowls is kind of where it starts, but if there's not enough volume there, yeah, it's going to leak out and you've got, you know, carpet, wood, sheetrock, all that kinds of stuff, not to mention the uh, just the overall nastiness of it. So um, two ways you can go about that. You can either self-insure and take on the risk entirely yourself and pay for that, or Get an endorsement added to your policy to help cover the cost of that. Does that include stuff like um, like we went to a vacation a couple of years ago and our hot water heater burst? Right. And uh, luckily, uh, 
my uh, sister-in-law came over and uh, noticed it, turned the water off and everything. Right. Uh, you know, something. I guess that would be a very common occurrence also. Very common. Most policies will include sudden discharge of water, uh, and that's what that is. That's what that's classified mm-hmm. as. Um, had it happened to a client up in the uh, up near Alney where she luckily, luckily for her, the hot water heater was in the garage, and the garage kind of sloped a little bit, so most of the water ran out. The garage did have some carpet damage on the inside of the house because it kind of seeped under the wall. Typically with that coverage, it will cover the uh, the... I guess, cost to fix the damage that it incurs. Mm -hmm. But strangely enough, it does not cover the actual hot water heater itself. So, again, you may want to check to make sure on your policy because not every policy is the same. Some folks have common HOA policies. You may have a TDP-1, and I know that's all, you know, insurance mumbo-jumbo. But, again, check with your insurance agent. Make sure, say, hey, you know, heard about it on the radio. Just want to make sure, hey, what does my policy have? If I... I have a pipe burst from a hot water heater, or we're kind of getting out of the cold months, even though today it was a little chilly, but, you know, frozen pipes, things like that, it's not really going to be that big of an occurrence now, but uh, hot water heaters, those suckers go out all the time, and uh, they tend to leave a a nice little uh, soupy mess for you, so just check with your agent and uh, make sure that that you're covered. And it's really also a good time to just check your entire policy, you know. Um, a lot of times we, we tell folks, come in once a year, let's go over it. But, you know, it's getting to be that spring season. Maybe uh, maybe mama wants a new uh, room added onto the house or a conversion to the garage or something like that. If you're going to do that stuff, check with your agent, see if there's anything you got to worry about with that. And uh, maybe a good time to just kind of review your policy to make sure you have enough coverage. We've seen a lot of folks here lately um, – you know, come in and they'll say, well, hey, this is what my house is covered at. And when we kind of do an evaluation and look at how big the house is compared to how much coverage they have, right. it's not enough. It maybe was, you know, 20, 30 years ago when the policy started, but now uh, they may be insuring the house at only, you know, 50 to $60 a square foot. And folks, I hate to tell you, if your house burns down or blows away at 50 or $60 a square foot, it's going to be hard to replace that. It's going to be really hard to replace it at that. Typical rates in Graham go anywhere from Oh, 80 to 100, maybe $110 a square foot, just depending on the makeup of your house, what you have in it, you know, countertop floors and all that good stuff. So really good time, springtime coming around, check out your endorsements, see what your policy has, but it's also a good time to just go over your policy, make sure you're covered the way you need to be. So if someone wants to make a reboot of their policy and they want to get a hold of you, how's the best way to do it? Really simple, 549-2525. You can call up, talk to Ann, Lynette, myself, and be more than happy to review your policy, whether you're, whether you're a client or not. I uh, would love to sit down with you, go over it, make sure you have the, the right coverages where they need to be. You can also visit our website at brianins.com. That's B-R-Y-A-N-I-N-S.com. You can also, if you want, come on up to the second floor of the Sierra Bank building and and uh, we'll give you that free elevator ride up to the second floor. Come on in. Ask for, uh, again, ask for Joe, Lynette, or myself. Again, not only do we do auto, home, life, health insurance, and all that, if you're thinking about maybe starting up a business, uh, want to get some commercial insurance or have somebody take a look at that, we do a ton of that stuff as well. So we got you covered either way you want to go. Um, just come on up, give us a call, hit our website, and we'll get you done. Make sure you get it done at Brown Insurance Agency. Right here in Graham, Texas, serving the Young County area and beyond for almost a hundred years. All right, Joe, appreciate your time, my friend. Thanks, Rick. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day. All right, we got Ringo Starr coming up, so stick around. <laughs> 